guys, all the past here with a little making of video of a game I'm just finishing up with called Black Dog. Uh, Black Dog is my first HTML5 game, so it's written in JavaScript. It's essentially a clone of an old Flash game called the Helicopter Game, which is one of these survival runner type games where you accumulate a score and try and survive as long as you can. Uh, there are a few differences though in my version. Uh, chiefly there's this slightly more interesting control mechanic whereby uh, clicking will make your character flap his wings which will make him fly up, so it's essentially a, a jump or boost. Holding down that button will allow you to glide and letting go will let you drop down. I've been playing around with this mechanic for quite some time in my head uh, as I have the sort of paradise lost Christian mythology type thing so it's good to have some way of expressing these. Um, recently I started taking screenshots uh, over the course of development of my games just to show people the various phases they went through. So this here is essentially a tutorial by Michael Budzinski, I hope I pronounced his name correctly. I, I followed this tutorial to get to grips with HTML5. You can see here the various phases of development. Uh, the most difficult thing here was getting the uh, tunnel working correctly, so I've got various debug overlays here. Um, essentially we have a floating point difficulty value which varies between 0 and 1. Based on this we change the uh, width, minimum width of the tunnel, as well as the maximum rate of change. We generate uh, the middle of the tunnel first of all, and then the top and bottom uh, on either side of that. So of course the middle of the tunnel can actually vary, so you can't just keep in the middle of the screen and survive. Uh, as you can see I've added this little parallax layer behind at this point to give some illusion of uh, depth. And uh, this is all done with three polygons. And finally I added the black dog, which is of course the enemy and the uh, thing you're supposed to be trying to escape from. The game went through a number of iterations along development. Uh, in the beginning it was very much like the helicopter game except with the different control mechanics so uh, you would die as soon as you touched a wall. Uh, first thing I added was the feathers because I found players were essentially using the flap as a jump and just bouncing up and down along the bottom and I really wanted to enforce this sort of interactive aesthetic, the more ponderous glide and flap type uh, gameplay so I, I managed to essentially force the player into that way of playing uh, through this resource management. Uh, the feathers regenerate quite quickly but uh, the regeneration timer is reset whenever you flap. Uh, the next thing that's interesting are the weights. Um, I thought the game, essentially the game's theme which is quite pensive and melancholic wasn't really suited to the idea of accruing a score over time, so uh, I added uh, a sort of backwards score where you're losing score as you go along rather than gaining it. So I needed something negative, so I added these weights. So you're essentially liberating yourself gradually from these weights that drag you down uh, as you go along. And uh, this led to quite an interesting effect, which was before when you were gathering score, it didn't matter so much if uh, the game was hard because it was just a matter of surviving as long as you could and comparing your score with your friends. But uh, since adding the weights there's now a sort of objective uh, which is to get to the end. So I had to make the game a little bit easier so to stop it from being so frustrating. Um, so it was really at this point that I got rid of the uh, death, uh, insta-death mechanic and also previously when you hit a wall you would uh, bounce back but uh, you would also lose uh, three feathers I think it was, which would really be a serious penalty and you were also stunned for a short duration. So um, I decided later to get rid of this penalty altogether. I think it was bad enough for you to be knocked back. Of course if you're knocked back too far you're eaten by the dog. So your horizontal position essentially represents your remaining hit points. And uh, if you move too far left you are eaten. Uh, the dog doesn't actually appear until you move uh, quite close to the left side, which is why it isn't shown here at all, because I'm essentially playing perfectly. I'm doing this commentary afterwards, by the way, otherwise I'd probably be a bit more distracted. It's interesting to note as well that there's a sort of negative feedback at play. 
in that uh, you're gradually moving towards the right as long as you don't hit any walls and of course the further to the right you are um, the less of the tunnel you see in advance so the game becomes actually slightly harder the better you're playing which is quite interesting and uh, not entirely intentional I'm afraid I can't really claim credit for that but uh, uh, I think it's it, it's an effect I wanted to, to hang on to uh, I should also note that uh, programming this in, in JavaScript, JavaScript being a scripting language, once you get to grips with it, is really quite easy to use. There's a garbage collector. You don't have to worry too much about uh, setting up declarations and and uh, and schemas. Uh, so it's um, yeah, it's, it's very pleasant to program with. And getting everything working in JavaScript before moving on to something harder like uh, C++ or even Java. It is really quite good actually because um, now I'm working on a uh, C++ version and it's really nice to know that all the algorithms behind the circuit or array and the uh, the drawing of the, the height maps and so on, knowing that all this works already uh, is, is great because it means I don't have to worry so much about that side and just have to worry about uh, implementing the whole thing. Developing for Android is no better roses, of course, even though I've spent the last couple of months developing uh, technology for the native development kit. Most notably, uh, OpenGL uh, for Android is OpenGL ES for embedded systems, and Gless is unable to draw polygons directly. You need to give it triangles or lines. So I needed to take this polygon, this red area, and separate it into various sections. Luckily, this is pretty much already done since uh, it's a height map, essentially. So uh, all I needed to do was figure out a way of separating this into triangles. And this next image shows more or less how that's done. It's fairly simple on paper, but uh, pretty finicky to program. So it took me a couple of days. Uh, here are a few shots of various attempts. So here I managed to block out the top quads and uh, this next picture I've started work on uh, the bottom triangles of course this one is back to front so not quite working and here we have a final beautiful uh, smooth edge so we can see in this video we've got a C++ version of what we had before in uh, HTML5 uh, as you can see it's a bit jittery though and this is because I'm not caching the polygons uh, in any way I'm actually re-triangulating everything from the beginning every single time, which is of course horrendously inefficient. So I went back to the drawing board on this, tried to create a sort of cache and only modify it each time we generate a new segment. So you can see the rate more or less at which we're generating segments. Uh, and of course this is completely off. Various other graphical glitches like this occurred, quite funny. And here of course is the final version, the one I've got now, which is of course working very nicely and smoothly. There's still a lot left to do in the C++ version, but hopefully we'll see uh, Black Dog for Android very soon. And of course, uh, you can have it on Linux too as a C++ exec executable if you want. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this little making of video, and um, see you guys soon.